Hey. Oh, Buccaneers Jaguars. What do you guys say? How about Nick Foles? Understand. Remember, Nick Foles was the Eagles quarterback last year in week two, and the Buccaneers shocked the Eagles in a victory down there in Tampa. Could he get his revenge? Let's see. This one here, right away, we get going. It is Shaq Barrett knocking it loose, and rookie Devin White taking it in for a 14 yard touchdown. So let's go to the bench. Gardner, lead us. <laughs> it's a frame photo. That point is a frame to the stadium. Frame the mustache. Frame. It goes through, goes through security. Oh, what's that? That's my framed Gardner Minshew shrine. Um, <laughs> Minshew intercepted by rookie Sean Murphy bunting. This game got close at the end here. Oh. But Foles and Minshew, neither one can get it done. Buccaneers have put another score on here. 28 to 11. Buccaneers have won a couple games in a row. Jameis, the key stat. Zero interception. Very Talk about nice. it. Talk hey, about it. Balling out. He's balling Sean out. Murphy Bunting from Wyoming. Let's bring in Central Michigan. Ah. <laughs> Our guy Ian Rappaport. He's in New York with us this morning on GMF with updates all around. Yes, we just saw Nick Foles benched in favor of Minshew Mania yesterday. What can you tell us about the quarterback sitch in Jacksonville? Okay, this is a complicated decision for Jacksonville because usually when you have something where a reserve quarterback comes in and kind of solidifies things, not like Minshew played great, great, still had an interception, still had some ups and downs, but usually you'd say, all right, we'll let that reserve kind of finish out the season. Maybe he gives the Jaguars a better chance. The issue with Nick Foles is his contract next year is essentially fully guaranteed as well. So any decision they make right now would have a potentially dramatic effect on next year as well. Plus, you also have, and there's really no way around this, some serious uncertainty about the coaching staff and everyone else in Jacksonville for next year, which makes everything else up in the air too. I wouldn't be surprised either way if they go with Gardner Minshew now, uh, kind of try to rekindle some Minshew mania, or if they say Nick Foles is our starter now and for next year, certainly he is better than the fumbleitis he showed on Sunday. Very, very complex situation for Jacksonville Jaguars at the quarterback situation, at the quarterback spot now. No, no doubt, no question. Nobody likes fumbleitis. And this is just one piece of a quarterback puzzle that's league wide in the NFL after this season with Kyle Allen and what's going on with oh, Cam yeah. Newton and free agency and Tom Brady up there in Foxborough. Stay tuned and buckle your seatbelt Rivers, for quarterbacks right, after the 100th year of the NFL. Thanks, Ian. We'll talk to you in a bit. Up next, we'll highlight three of course, what we do here on Mondays. We've seen a lot. From Lamar Jackson, but he took it next level on Sunday. I saw it in person. I was shook. Mm. It took me back to a place of fandom that I was like five years old. Rams and the Cardinals going at it in the desert. How would the Rams respond after getting embarrassed on Monday night by the Ravens? Let's see. Jared Goff looking. He finds his guy, Cooper Cup, for the touchdown. Ten yards. Jared Goff was on fire here. Okay, Kyler Murray. Suing possession, second and ten. What's he gonna do? Kyler looking. And it's intercepted. Intercepted by Taylor Rapp at the University of Washington. He takes it in for the pick six. This was a blowout to the highest order. 34 to 7, the ultimate response to an embarrassing loss. Rams still alive in the playoff. I see All right. Chargers, Broncos, Broncos second round QB. Drew Locke, he's in the game. He went from the hurt locker to trying to blow up, and here he is going to Courtlandia. That's Courtland Sutton for the touchdown. Hey, Courtland Sutton is having one hell of a season. He is a pro bowler. And there is the Drew Lock family. What's up, Locks? Hey, Locks. Okay, fourth quarter, three seconds left. After a P.I. call, controversial may it be, and this is Brandon McManus for Magnuson with the strong leg. I see you getting in for the game winner. The Broncos, they would win this one 23 to 20, and Drew was feeling it. Oh, Jumping Drew. all over the field. I see you, yeah. The 37 yard pass interference call, that was absurd. And speaking of that, Shregs, let's hear from Al Riveron, because I actually thought it was a pass interference. Hmm. We're in Denver with four seconds to go. There was a call for defensive pass interference. The defender cuts off the receiver while the ball is in the air. Therefore, that is pass interference. First and 10 for Denver. Okay. Chargers have not been able to close out games this year. P.I. is one issue, but the Chargers are another. They can't do it. And you know what, Kyle? It's not so much the close losses. It's the way that they happen. Melvin Gordon fumbling on the goal line to end the game. The potato chip guy 
from the Raiders, picking off Rivers every other game. Their punter having to kick field goals and missing in Detroit. And now this P.I. with three seconds to go. What's the deal? It's one of the favorite jokes everyone has Chargers fans in the switching hour. I'm tired of it. I think it's dumb. And now the Chargers have a good kicker. And maybe once when they get a real home field, they can close out games. Until then, the call. Tough. Chargers Tough. fans can be upset. The NFL has every ability to review that call. It's under two minutes. It's, it's every, they don't review it. It's frustrating. All these different calls are being overturned around the league. For this one to not at least go to the booth for review, and then you get, you know, Al saying that, and it's kind of like, all right, open, book, shut, done. Okay, moving right along. Like, if you're a Chargers fan, and Anthony Lynn, who never speaks ill of the officials, and never goes out, he was livid after the game. It's just... <sighs> it was a P.I. Let's move along. <laughs> it was a bad it was a P.I. More highlights. On the way. Look at it. Final word. No, 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 no. All right. Well, what were the Dolphins doing down in Miami? We had eyes on the ground. Peter Schrager was there for all of.